So, a few days ago I was trying to buy something online. While searching in my browser, I came across a Pakistani e-commerce website. Unfortunately, I couldn't find what I was looking for. But I did find something else, something you might find interesting. At first glance, the site looked a bit outdated, and I was right. Its copyright date was registered back in 2014. That immediately piqued my curiosity. So, I started analyzing the website. While exploring, I found a search bar meant for looking up products. That's when my brain switched gears. I thought, why not test for cross-site script? My intentions were ethical. If I found a vulnerability, I planned to report it to the site owner, and that's exactly what I did. You'll see the results at the end of this video. This process is called bug bounty hunting, where security researchers find and report bugs to website owners, sometimes receiving a reward in return. So I started with a manual XSS test in the search bar, using a simple payload. First, I tried an HTML U tag, which underlines text. If the website was interpreting HTML from the search input, my searched word should appear underlined. And guess what? It actually worked. This confirmed that the site was processing user input as HTML, which was a potential security risk. Next, I tried an A tag, which is used to create hyperlinks. I set it to redirect to my own website, and again it worked. At this point, I knew the site was vulnerable, but I wanted to take it a step further. Could I execute actual JavaScript on the site? That's when things got really interesting. So I tried a basic JavaScript payload to test whether the site was truly vulnerable. If executed, it would trigger an alert box saying, this site has been hacked. The payload I used is on your screen now, and guess what? It worked. This confirmed that the website was vulnerable to cross-site scripting. If not mitigated properly, this type of flaw can lead to serious consequences. This specific vulnerability is called reflected XSS. While it's not as dangerous as stored XSS, it's still a major security risk. Unlike stored XSS, which injects malicious scripts permanently into a website. Reflected XSS requires the attacker to trick a user into clicking a crafted link. At this point, I wanted to test for stored XSS, which would have been far more dangerous. I looked for a comment section, feedback form, or any other input field where I could inject my payloads, but I couldn't find one. With this vulnerability, an attacker could do a lot of damage. One of the most common attacks is stealing cookies. A hacker could craft a malicious URL and send it to a victim. If the victim clicks on it, their session cookies could be stolen potentially giving the attacker access to their account. Another possibility is phishing attacks, where the attacker redirects users to a fake login page designed to steal their credentials. But the real danger begins when an attacker finds other vulnerabilities like SSRF or CSRF. If these weaknesses exist, an attacker could escalate the attack and even gain admin access causing serious havoc. The worst part, defacement was actually possible, meaning an attacker could completely change the appearance of the website. And honestly, testing that part was really fun. After discovering the bug, I decided to find a way to contact the site owner and inform them about the vulnerability. Luckily, I found a WhatsApp number at the bottom of the web page. I messaged them, explaining the issue and how it could put their users at risk. But to my surprise, they simply replied that they weren't interested. That was it. My responsibility was just to report the bug, and I had done my part. Now, I want to share something important. Reflected XSS isn't considered a high-severity vulnerability, but in bug bounty programs, it can still earn you anywhere from $200 to $300. My case was a bit different since I wasn't doing this for a bounty. My only intention was to help secure their site, but since they didn't care, there was nothing more I could do. I backed off and didn't dig any deeper, but I'm pretty sure that if I had done some more reconnaissance, I could have found more vulnerabilities. However, I didn't, because that would have been completely illegal and could have caused serious trouble for the site owner, something I had no intention of doing. Bug bounty hunting is an incredibly exciting field. It allows you to legally hack into websites, report security flaws and get paid for it. Instead of using illegal methods to break into sites, why not use your skills ethically and make even more money the right way?